before we get to the younger, I guess we start with not called the older, Louis the Carvajal, the older. Is that is that how we? How we... Yeah, you could do it. The, the, the you know in Spanish it's el viejo, the the elder. You can do it okay. like that. Um, also, just also for our, our listeners. So the the name. This is so it's Carvajal. J in Spanish is almost like a like a like a chet, okay. right? So it's like Carvajal. Um, yeah, so you can see that there. Yes, his uncle, his uncle, um, Luis de Carvajal y de la Cueva, um, fascinating figure. Um, there's a wonderful, very well-researched biography on just him, on the governor, uh, by uh, Samuel Temkin um, that people can, can, can find. I don't have it on my shelf, so I, otherwise I would show it to you. Um, and he is a person who kind of follows this interesting path in his life. He starts out his life as a typical Portuguese merchant. Um, he does a lot of overseas travel for his for his business. He has a partner who's an, a fellow Portuguese converso. Um, he marries the daughter of that fellow Portuguese converso. Uh, again, a very common uh, move in this in this diaspora makes money in in overseas trade gets him to, to the Caribbean and it's at that point that he gets himself involved in this other stage of his life which is I see as his attempt to to erase his converso past and forge for himself a conquistador identity an identity as a you know, almost like a, a whitening of his identity, we would say in, I think, modern sociological parlance, he wanted to become like the old Christian upper class. And how do you do that? You don't do that through money. You do that through through, through, through military service and being rewarded for that military service with land. And that's what happens to him. He's rewarded with a territory, Northwest, um, I'm sorry, uh, Northeast Mexico, modern day Mexico, uh, known as the New Kingdom of Leon. And that people who know Mexico today would know that the city of Monterrey, a uh, very important industrial hub in, in Mexico, um, that was a city that, you know, is in the heart of that of that area. Um, and, and that is a place where he was given the governorship of. And part of the deal was that he would be able to bring um, a large number of family members over. And this was curious because he was of new Christian blood. New Christians or conversos were not allowed officially to come to the Americas. They all came anyways, um, but officially weren't allowed to. But this guy who's the governor is allowed to bring his family and they get a special dispensation despite the fact that they are all of, of new Christian background Um and actually a Portuguese new Christian background that then went back to Spain, which is something that wasn't uncommon. Um, so kind of prime targets for the Inquisition um, are now let in under almost like diplomatic immunity. They're brought over and um, they're there to help him uh, run this very chaotic, difficult territory. Um, it was very unsettled. It was a lot of desert land, a lot of swamps. And... Um, and the indigenous populations there were not settled Indians, as they would call them in those times. They were nomadic, and they were not happy with all these, with all these, uh, um, uh, you know, foreigners coming in and taking their territory. And they showed it by attacking uh, Spanish settlements all over. And the job of the Carvajal of, of, of Carvajal, the governor, was to protect the mining areas and the settled small settlements that were there from these. From the from the, what was known as the Chichimeco um, Indians, um, and to run to run the territory, but it was a very difficult job, and he needed that help from his family. So so that brings the rest of the Carvajal family over, along with many many other cousins and distant relatives, um, into 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 the heart of uh, of Mexico, colonial Mexico. Uh, 